Hi, welcome to Blue Heron Hill. I'm Sue, and this is Memorial Day weekend. I hope you had time to spend with family and maybe some friends. Um, but I also hope you had a moment of time to think about those that gave their lives in service to our country, those that served in all branches of the armed forces. So with that in mind, let's get to my garden and see what was going on. I did plant tomatoes, as you saw in the last video. I also planted peppers this week. I planted beans this week. Oh my, these are warm weather crops. And with lows overnight in the 40s, I think last night we got down to the low 40s. I think it was 42, my husband said. Um, anyway, let's see how things fared. Join me. Here is one problem. See the purpling on the leaves? They do think that may have been because of the cold. The plant still looks good. The tomato looks great, but um, we'll see how it turns out. Um, I did, I have one here that seems to have uh, suffered something. Uh, we'll see if it makes a comeback. But the tomatoes all down the row are hanging in there, hoping for warmer days of head, ahead. Here we have our peppers, small, but they didn't seem to um, suffer from the cold. These two larger ones, <laughs> these were the ones that overwintered. They have some great growth at the top. If I zoom in just a little bit, you can see there's a tiny little pepper. Um, well, it would be a blossom first. And uh, it'll get there. This one, interestingly, already has a pepper on it. I left that pepper on it. Um, both of these plants were full of blossoms when they were growing inside. And um, I took most of the blossoms off and I left that one. But these are all doing, doing well. And those are all doing well also. This is the area of my garden that I call Pepper Parkway. So I have my passageway through the center and I have peppers on both sides. I had this last year also. If you want to go back and visit a few of my other videos from last year, you can see my results of my Pepper Parkway. More tomatoes on this trellis here. Hard to see, there's a Candyland tomato, I think it is. Um, celery, finally acclimating. We are having a few, that won't make it so I could pinch that off, but this is all new growth coming up. Very excited to see that. Celery takes a very long time to grow, if I'm not mistaken least 100 days so it'll be a while but you can pick it from the outer leaves and leave and um, and leave the growth on the inside to you know give you kind of the cut and come again harvesting my onions are off to a magnificent start I've paid particular attention to uh, fertilizing um, a little bit of nitrogen to get them started. I have been watering them regularly so they stay moist. They are not stressed for, for water. We did have a number of weeks where we had no rain at all, so I did have to hand water. In the coming week, I'm probably getting in my drip irrigation so I can automatically keep these watered but I am very proud of the way they look right now. I've been picking a few for the small, the green onion stage and been very pleased with their growth. Here's a trellis of tomatoes. Hard to focus in on, on a lot of these. They are adjacent to my blue, uh, excuse me, my strawberry patch, which are just ablaze and hundreds and hundreds of those beautiful, beautiful little blossoms. 
Over here, the bees are busy, 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 if you can hear any of them, um, pollinating the flowers on the raspberry bushes. So I expect a very nice crop of raspberries. And there's potatoes in the far bed, garlic, which is nearly three feet tall <laughs> in those back two beds. With, uh, with a few onions in that one bed to the left over here with garlic in the back. I am very excited to see that flower on my sugar snap peas. So not far behind, there will be peas. And these are doing just fine. They look to be up almost to the three fit level. Um, I'm going to have another fence put on top of that. So they will grow to about five feet, this, this variety. Here's a close up on the potatoes. They are doing just fine. Once they get about three more inches high, probably the six to seven inch range, I will We'll be filling in, you know, this hilling, filling in, covering up most of the foliage. So there's just be a little bit at the top. You do this so any potatoes that are going to be forming right here close to the surface don't get exposed to the sunlight. They produce um, a substance that is uh, not the best for us to eat. That's when potatoes will turn green. They have that greenish cast and that's not good. The tomato is probably the most grown fruit in a backyard gardener's vegetable patch. So we want to take care of it. We want to nurture it. We want to give it all the right things. Um, one thing that's very important in the life cycle of a tomato is calcium. Um, the deficiency of calcium results in blossom end rot, which is where the tomato has a black spot forming on the end of it. Um, in order to avoid that, we need to make sure our soil has calcium in it. Um, uh, I would suggest a soil test to make sure that your soil does have enough calcium in it. If not, we need to add some amendments. A lot of people will put crushed up eggshells in the bottom of their planting hole. Um, this is a very good thing. It adds to the health and, the, new, and the, the life and the vitality of your garden, but it's probably not going to do anything for the tomatoes that you plant in that hole this year. It takes a while for this calcium to break down the microorganisms in the soil will need to um, do their magic to spread it into the soil. And then the plants, the tomatoes and the peppers, will, will then take it up through their roots and their vascular system and nourish the fruits. So we need a better source of calcium if we need it um, to give our plants. Bone meal, I put that in. Um, it still needs to be broken down by the microorganisms in the soil, but it's a little bit better. It's already started um, and uh, better than the, the eggshells. Uh, limestone is another one, or lime, um, or gypsum even, are good sources of um, calcium. Um, but those you have to be careful because they can change the pH of your soil. Um, that requires another test of your soil. So I hope you're getting that done. Um, another thing to avoid blossom end rot would be watering. And, and why, what I'm saying about watering, of course, all the plants are going to need water, but you're going to need to water your tomatoes and peppers regularly so they have a steady stream of water. Not too much, not too little. You don't want dry and drought conditions, and certainly then you don't want them to be, you know, standing in soggy water all the time. But water deeply, water regularly, 
and that should help with blossom end rot. So let's see how my, <laughs> my uh, garden and my tomatoes fare this year. I had a bit of it last year and I'm going to try and start uh, stay to a good watering schedule and I have amended my soil with um, with the right nutrients that the tomatoes and the peppers need. Here we are adjacent to my bean arbor and I still have some spinach in this bed here and these are a, a, a a watermelon radish, uh, which is a daikon variety. But I thought, well, I'll be pulling those up real soon and I'll be pulling the spinach up real soon. So I will plant my beans in rows and look what's come up. This has been just four days since I've put these beans in. These are a yellow bush bean variety. And I also have some onions here, which I'll be pulling up as, um, you know, green onions. But those two rows of yellow bush beans have come up, even in this cold, cold weather. Uh, this is parsley, and that'll stay here until it's getting ready to harvest. Oh, I planted a tomato at this end. I have a few radishes here. They will do fine. These are my pole beans and they have popped up also. I planted those at the same time as the yellow bush beans, and they are coming up all the way down um, to grow up on this trellis. Uh, these here on this side, I think, are purples, and down here are green pole beans, and then the trellis is up and over, and then down to the other side, and conversely, these will be purple, and the ones that are going to be coming up here are green. And I have a few more radishes on this side. Radishes are always such a quick, a quick grow, about 21 days for most of them. Here's another tomato on the trellis here. Um, I will be harvesting these starting this week. They are absolutely gorgeous, picture perfect. You almost don't even see that at the market. Just gorgeous. Um, down at this end, I think this is, yep, that's parsley too. <laughs> so now I jumped the gun too and I planted my sweet potatoes and you can tell I was a little bit premature in starting these because they have suffered a little bit from the cold. But I don't think they will be too, too impacted, this guy over here. I think they will bounce back. Here's more sweet potatoes. Doing just fine, another row lettuce. Carrots seem to be doing well in this bed. These are two beds with the insect netting over the top. Um, I have broccoli here. I think I have one. It's hard to see. One starting to head here. Lots of broccolis. Kind of succession planted here. This is Chinese cabbage. I have some insect pressure going on here. I'm thinking maybe it was its slugs. So I have set out some beer traps. That seems to be my preference. This particular one has quite a number of eaten leaves. I'm okay with that. I think um, most of the interior leaves is what's gonna head up nicely. Here on this bed is uh, that's more Chinese cabbage, and this is cauliflower right there, some kale, and some kohlrabi, and you can, you can see those tiny little spaceships right there. I think kohlrabi is just so cool. And 
here we go. And here's my feed bag alley here. And these I have planted pumpkins in. Uh, most of them pumpkins. Um, I think there's one with sugar baby watermelon. Here I have a Kajari melon, which are just starting to peek out, just sprouting. And I even have, this is Tigger melon. I've got one popping out there. Oops, another one right there. But I'm very excited about my pumpkins. I hope this works. I talked about it in another video how I have difficulty growing pumpkins because of the lack of space and the lack of good soil. Those are looking good. I could see them all trailing over the feed bags, spilling over the grass. Thanks for spending time with me at Blue Heron Hill today. Small little tour of the garden to see what's growing. Uh, still early in the season, but things are popping up. Still have a few more things to put in. Um, hopefully this week, it's been cold this past week. Things can only, only go up. Um, if you like the content, subscribe. Pass it along, please, to other people that you think might enjoy this. Um, give me a thumbs up and click that bell for any further notifications. If you see in the background here, I've got a pad going in. Uh, perhaps in the next video, you'll see what that's all about. Anyway, so I'm glad you came uh, and I hope to see you on the next video when I go digging in the dirt again. Till then, bye.